Hi and welcome to a first look at the Windows Technical Preview. This is build um, 9841 as you can see in the corner here. Now I should say this is a tad bit sluggish and that's because I'm running on a Mac Mini using Parallels Desktop 10. So um, uh, if things seem a bit sluggish then I imagine it will be a lot faster on a, a dedicated system. So at the moment it's got 4 gig of RAM and a couple of the cores but again it's running Mac OS side by side as well. So. Um, Anyway, let's have a quick look. So first of all, uh, when we booted into the um, technical preview, we got a desktop environment immediately. So the whole modern UI interface, gone as far as I can see. Um, and it's been replaced with a Windows Start menu, which is, let's face it, what we all wanted in Windows 8. Um, I mean... Don't get me wrong, the Metro interface was, or well, it's called the Metro, but the modern UI interface um, was absolutely brilliant if you're using a tablet. But for uh, um, the majority of machines out there, desktops and laptops, we're still using the old keyboard and mouse. Um, now, since then, there have been some lovely uh, new systems that um, sort of combine the two concepts, but none of them's really come to the top of the market as such. I mean, uh, you know, Surface Pro is pretty good. Um, example of what can be done, but it, it still doesn't stack up to uh, and the number of laptops and systems out there. So for those of you sort of in enterprise sectors uh, or, or who are content creators like I am, um, then this uh, addition of a new Windows Start menu is... Um, very welcome indeed. Now, um, they have married the Metro interface and the... Uh, I keep saying Metros because they that's how they advertised it originally. Um, so they kind of married it into one element. So you've still got access to your live tile um, elements here. All these things will update. Um, but in addition to this, you've also got a very traditional looking um, Windows 7-esque looking start menu. Um, now, one of the things you can do is resize it. I don't know why I can't resize it left and right, but you can certainly resize it up and down. So if you want um, a low flat one, you can have a low flat one. If you want a taller one, then you can do that as well. Or if you just want, just want more program items, and that's uh, all available there as well. Um, obviously, we got some feedback and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, this, this is literally my first time running it. I, I'm, I'm sort of rambling on as I look through this myself. Um, but we've got the usual things you'd expect, uh, sort of alarms, calculator, calendar, calendar, uh, camera, I mean, um, documents, finance, blah, blah, blah. Got sort of all the applications you come to know and love in Windows 8, um, plus the uh, Camtasia Studio I'm using to record this. So other than Camtasia and, of course, um, the Parallels Desktop shared folders, well, basically the Parallels Desktop stuff has been installed as well. Uh, but other than that, I'm not entirely sure what this workbook is. Um, oh, it's a shared desktop. Okay, okay, sorry. Yeah, so, um, yeah, there, there are a few things that have been added via Parallels, um, but other than that, it's basic Windows. Um, I mean, it's not that exciting. It's, it's okay. But to be honest, I don't really see that much benefit over only Windows 7, to be honest. I mean, you get the Start menu back, uh, and that's about it. I mean, it's nice that you can resize things, but... Um, other than that, it's a box standard Windows desktop environment. Now they are they are um, looking to introduce some new technologies. Something called Continuum is going to turn up eventually. It's not available yet, um, where it actually senses what kind of device you're using. So if you install Windows 10 on a tablet, then it will default to the uh, full screen app. Oh yes, that's right. Um, if we open up um, an app here, you'll notice that we got a little thing. And this is basically for your charms menu. So uh, just wait for the... Might ask me to log in, actually, because uh, I haven't yet. Uh, do, 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 do. It's taken a while, isn't it? Okay, let's try another one while that's going. Uh, let's try the calendar. So we've got the calendar app. And... Of course, he's going to ask me for Microsoft accounts and all this kind of stuff, isn't it? Yeah, so uh, we'll ignore that for now. 
don't seek you on see my calendar. Um, I mean, what can we actually run that doesn't require internet connectivity is the question. Um, our video player is pretty safe. There we go. Now, you can actually resize a window. This is what I was trying to show you, is that you can actually multitask now um, between windows. So we don't have any of that situation where you drag one over there and drag one over the other. It's not an ideal situation. I mean, it's called Windows for a reason. It's because you can open Windows. <laughs> And that was the whole point of the, the original concept of Windows, and it's why it's maintained its name. Um, so yeah, uh, you, you can basically run the uh, modern UI apps um, in window format. You still have access to the charms menu via this um, sort of charm menu drop-down thingy here. Sorry, I don't know the correct names for all these. I suppose um, the App Store was working. So anyway, you've got all the App Store. You're all familiar with this. Again, same thing. You can just... Um, Resize it, and you can have everything running side by side. And you just use the middle mouse button to scroll left and right, which is nice and sensible. Or well, of course, you've got this scroll bar. But basically, you can re resize it to any um, sort of size you like. That's interesting. It's not sizing up and down. So it seems to be a, a, a minimum height to the actual window itself but that's pretty thin so it's kind of what i expect to see on a phone which makes sense because um they're planning on rolling out windows 10 on phones and tablets and everything else as well so uh, that that's the direction things are going you're just gonna be running the full windows operating system on things um, as far as i'm aware they're dropping the whole rt thing as well so we're just going to have a full version of windows 10 um, which will be good if we can get that of course, it also means suddenly your phones are susceptible to viruses and things. So we'll see how well that goes. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a full operating system. Um, you got all things you'd expect, sort of uh, Netflix and a few games. Um, or it's not really a review of the store. And you just close down windows like this. Sort of um, um, very card file look. Um, well, it's down to personal taste whether or not you like it. I don't really care one way or the other, to be honest. I, I'm kind of glad just to get the start menu back more than anything else. Um, because, of course, even with Windows um, 8.1 Update 1, you don't really get a start menu. What you basically get is, you know, um, the full start screen. Um, which, yeah, it's, it's fine, but... I mean, the trouble is, I've, I've been doing a lot of volunteer work recently with um, people who don't know how to use computers. Um, so it could be anyone from a sort of nothing year old lady trying to do a shopping online to someone who's just never taken the time to learn them. Uh, and their question is always about Windows 8. Is it really as bad as it sounds? Well, how's the learning curve and all this kind of stuff? And... Um, I mean, most of them, even though they don't have much experience, will have used Windows at some point in their life. And by maintaining that consistent menu, it means they can generally get the idea of how to run things pretty quick. But the modern UI interface really did confuse all of these people. Um, and, and half my time um, doing this volunteer work is teaching people how to use the Metro interface. Again, I'm referring to Metro there because that's how they originally advertised it. Um, but yeah, uh, so, so having this start menu back should sort of alleviate that problem. And also you have to think about employees, um, anyone working for a company, enterprise customers, and they are a huge part of the Microsoft business model. Um, sort of them being shunted aside in this in this sort of vain quest to emulate Apple. Um basically didn't go very well <laughs> so uh and i imagine that's i mean the, the other thing of course we'll notice is it's called windows 10 it's not windows 9 um i've got a number of theories for this it's all guesswork of course but i imagine first of all um you got mac os 10 there so now they can compete directly with apple by saying well we got version 10 as well um my second theory is windows Nine sounds like the German word nine for no, so Windows no doesn't that really have a great marketing term. Um, I doubt that's really true, but it's amusing to think about. And of course, the other thing is just to distance itself from Windows 8 because it was such a disaster uh, and it's got such a negative 
um, word of mouth commentation about it. It's uh, again, I mean, all these people are coming in, they know very little about computers. The one thing they have all heard is that Windows 8 is difficult to learn, or it's annoying, or people don't like it. Um, and that's the one thing they keep coming in and say, Oh, should I get Windows 8? Is it really as bad as, as, as they say? And of course, the short answer is no, it's, it's, it's you know, it's got a slightly different learning curve. And because they're people who don't really use computers anyway, and they're coming in fairly fresh, you know, there's no real advantage to Windows 7 to Windows 8 because they're not having to relearn anything. But to anyone else who's used uh, sort of Windows 95 onwards, <laughs> um, there is a little bit of a learning curve, a little bit of a well, huge culture shock there. And it's just it's the fact that I can get to my my you know folders and and programs very easily just by uh, by going to the item menu here. Um, it's just I just prefer this. You know, it's familiar. It's easy to pick up. It's not something you have to go out as a business and retrain your entire staff on how to use, which is the uh, the biggest thing. So I haven't really shown you that much because, to be honest, it isn't that much to show that I can see here. I mean, you have the the, the sort of same apps. The only real difference is it looks like Windows 8 um, without the uh, <laughs> the modern UI interface. Um, you've got sort of the, the, the sort of apps I'd expect. You've got Windows Explorer and all this kind of stuff. You've got the live tiles here. It's, it's, I suppose it's kind of nice, but to be honest, even when I, I I mean I do use Windows 8 on my big desktop, but to be honest, I never actually use the live tiles i don't see any reason for it i mean more often than not it's a bit of a pain because when i'm trying to um uh, to do tutorial videos and things i don't want things like um, faces of my friends showing up on live tiles and i have to sort of take the time to sort of go and edit that out um because you know i'm basically capturing and broadcasting images of people I don't have permission to do so with <laughs> uh, and, and sort of um, keep an eye on news and things and yeah so so yeah, as, as a content developer myself and someone who does lots of screencasts and things it's not that good um, so uh, yeah it, it can be a little bit difficult and uh, for that reason uh, but other than that this is basically it you got Windows 8 with a start menu um, there will be some other features and things coming along but to be honest, in my opinion, looking at this right now, you might as well roll back to 7 Pro. I don't really see much point. If you want to start menu, just roll back to 7 Pro. I don't see enough of a benefit here to justify um, a whole version number. Um, so yeah, I mean, maybe as the technical previews progress, uh, we will find that uh, more interesting features turning up. It may also be a case that I just don't know enough about what I'm talking about to... Uh, to uh, to list all the features um i mean the continuity one sounds interesting but again it's not really going to affect any desktop users um it's really only going to affect uh tablet users because then they'll have the full screen interface um you can uh, put these apps into full screen as well if you want um though you know we're going back to the windows ethos of having multiple windows open and as again any writer or video editor or content developer of any kind um cannot use the full screen interface it's great if you just want to sit on the couch and watch a video do one thing at a time that's great but even then even when i'm doing um sort of leisure time stuff I've generally got one window open where I'm chatting to someone. I've generally got Netflix open. I've got a couple of browser windows open where I've been looking up stuff. You know, I, I, I'm just so used to that um, idea of having all these different things open at the same time on a full-fledged desktop. Um, but I do it without thinking. And I think that's what the majority of people do when they're, if they're used to Windows, is just have lots of Windows open and that ability to swap between them. Um, anyone who's into tablets and things, of course, this could be slightly different because it's really a, a single task orientated device. Uh, yeah, you call it multitasking, but the, all it really means is that you can switch between applications pretty fast. And that's, that's not the same thing as multitasking. As far as I'm concerned, multitasking is the ability to have Skype open, uh, have a conversation while watching a video and keeping an eye on the news that's multitasking <laughs> um so yeah um enough of my rambling this is the windows 8 technical preview my first impressions and some opinions about the various um operating systems that have been released recently you know it's okay it does it so uh, yeah thanks for watching <laughs>